there. So, all right. All right. So, um, when we last left off, it's been a it's been a long time. It's been over a month now. But when we last left off, Proxinos and his party. First of all, this is kind of a one off. Um, kind of special one-on-one role-playing session between Nick and I, where this is the first time in a long time he's been able to talk to Artemisia, his mother, um, who had disappeared uh, when the father tried to kill him in the arena, Pentos, who we later realize is Thraxes, the, the ancient dragon who was under Perforos, as a champion of Perforos at one time, who has now fallen from grace and kind of disappeared to lick his wounds and after the party successfully wins this fight and is now in the graces of perforos they make it there they make they follow these tracks through the sewer which lead back to the house of christo um and i think you had turned into a little mouse or hamster yes. <laughs> uh-huh. and uh coming up through the through the through the toilets and cracking mm-hmm. a door there in the grand um archway of the, the middle of the house um in the early morning light um maybe the sun is not even really all the way up it's just kind of piercing in through the top of the um through the middle of the home that greek style home i always forget that archway the way it's called what it's called Mm -hmm. we see artemisia and she is you just realize you've seen your mother in all of her fancy and her graceful garb but to see her in all of her strength to see her standing in her actual gear with her helmet under her arm and her her shield on her back holding her spear talking to this centaur who you recognize to be zen and zen looks over almost like he hasn't seen the party in a while almost like and and he's, he's having this conversation um as you look over she she stops and whether you when she looks down <laughs> towards the door there's a crack in that door that leads to the restroom and there on the ground is that little animal and she doesn't whether she knows or not she looks at you at that animal in a certain look of love and she stops talking to Zen. she asks him to kind of back away and then what do you do i um <clears throat> i undo the wild shape as <laughs> I come I come back in my human form. She has like a smile on her face and um she doesn't run to you but she kind of strides forward. And in a weird way as she strides and her cloak billows, this Akron woman, uh fierce woman, uh the woman you when you, at an early age you'd seen her her fighting prowess because in your state, you know, even the women would go to war uh, if need be. Mm-hmm. Everyone in that that city is military has a military prowess, and so she strides forward to you, almost just opening with open arms to embrace you, um, and she hugs you, and um, she says, "I knew you made it," and she says, uh, <laughs> "So you followed my you followed my coins." wasn't the first thing that we did but we eventually got the message I actually something told me they may serve you even though I had no clue if you would make it here my initial thoughts were to use them uh, for my own survival in case I needed to double back and find my way back to the central location of uh, the lair. <laughs> did you did you find the lair? And then kind of turning back to the party and like um, there's bags of like gold and like everyone's <laughs> like has all this stuff on. and then kind of like turning back uh, yeah we did find the lair wait the, is the track in dead no but we bested him you retreated <laughs> she kisses your forehead she was like the gods are with us and you are 
beyond a champion. No matter who you serve, you remember that uh, you are House of Christo. She looks at the rest of the party, her flowing dark hair. I don't want to be rude. You are welcome. My house is yours now, but I have business. I have much to catch up with my son about. I hope you will um, allow us to excuse ourselves. And I imagine the rest of the party does not balk to that. Um, is Medio saying anything about all this? Because he's in the yeah. background as well. <laughs> and so, yes. And so as as he is the la- as everyone's kind of coming out, he's the last to enter the frame. And she looks and um, she smiles to him as well. And in a weird way, she makes sure she doesn't show it. But you get the feeling that um, she rushes over to give him a hug as well. But there's a moment of, of almost preferential treatment as a of child where there's something that's always made you a little different from him. And she never tries to show it in his presence. But it is interesting that like in those few moments, uh, she, hadn't, she hadn't mentioned Medios yet. Maybe because she's always assumed Medios would be fine. Um, but when she sees him, she embraces him. He's kind of quiet for a moment. He goes, Mother. Oh, we bested the dragon in your honor. And um, she says, I know you did, son. I know. And she sees the spear. She's, and it kind of crackles. It kind of shines. It doesn't do too much over the top, but it just kind of glows for a second. And she looks at him with a sense of respect, like as she realizes he's attuned to the to the spear. Huh. My boys, both of you champions, come. We will both talk. And uh, she leads you to the upper room, that room that things were kind of out of place where you found her ring um, standing overlooking on that, kind of in that room that overlooks the balcony below where you can see everyone else, Taroxies and Fitz, kind of relaxing now, playing a little tune, doing whatever they do. Mm -hmm. And um, she says, I know you have many questions, both of you, but I am here to answer them and many of us mother what is going on Uh, I yes you have much please explain Um, anything that Proxino says here Um, it's almost like um, Proxinos is still processing everything that's you know happened and he just says when did you find out about Thraxi's mother at the same shortly after your father did the unspeakable to you in the ring. The guards ushered us back. I knew something was wrong. To be honest, ever since your father fought that dragon, I've always known something was off. But I I did I I swear, my sons, I did not know. I would not tarnish your father's name in that way. I wish the gods would have told me. But when we got back here, I came upstairs immediately and grabbed my, my, um, my armor, my shield. And before I could lay a hand against him, he said we were leaving. He did not hurt me. I don't remember uh, force being used, but 
I know that I saw black. I woke, though I woke up with no bruise, maybe some type of sleep spell. And I woke up chained in the dragon's lair. I had to dislocate my thumbs to get out. And even then it had not completely crossed my mind. I thought that your father just simply was coming here to pray to peripherals or hoarding the dragon's treasure, something I didn't know about until I came across in that lair, a small little shrine in your father's armor that I, that's when I knew. I didn't, stranger things have happened and I decided to take what I can to track myself and I ran and I moved through that cavern. I would, to that point, I'd rather die from suffocation of the gases there. I did not know. I loved and respected your father, the true champion, Pinthos. And please don't ever not see him as the champion that he was. I held on the highest form of respect from my father. He was a true champion. He was. Medios is kind of dumbfounded and he kind of goes in the corner and sits leaning on the spear. Um, she says, this leads me to another thing. You can tell this is hard for her to speak on, but what happened in that arena, the God of death, My son, it is true, but it is not the full story. I want to explain, but I understand if you are not ready to understand. And looking over at Midios in the corner, and thinking about it. I can have is anybody else would you like to give us a moment? As she feels like maybe you need you want him to leave. It's it's you get the feeling that it's not about him being alone, but it's is it would this be something that would be hard for Midios to yeah to hear. We are family, and I think it's long, it's long time we stop keeping secrets if we are going to go forward. Medios, I want to share this truth. Are you prepared to handle it? As you, as your brother, reigning members of this house, I am the reigning member of this house, mother. I, the spear has attuned to me. I am actually Pinthos' son. Not... He almost like son. Like, almost like the old Midios is about to come out. And he's like... I love my brother. But I think we should start talking about our rightful standings. We are not made equal by what we learned in that arena. And I know his friends down there want to take full credit for everything. They're even already talking about taking the riches that we found. 
Mother, I looked at that gold and most of it comes from Akros and she kind of stops. And she goes, I understand, son. It's, it is mostly gold from the Akroin area. Times are changing and we must consider what has been done here. He kind of shuts up. I asked, are you ready to hear? Um, I'm going to roll for Medios to see if I think he, <laughs> in terms of his temperament, and I'm going to make this a DC 12, I think is what I'll say. Okay. And I have no dice on me right now, so I'm like pulling up my digital dice on D and D beyond here. Okay. And he's quiet for a moment. Um, and uh, kind of just drops his head, a bit of frustration. Um, and uh, my apologies, mother. You have been through much. And he kind of like finds his place and concedes. I am prepared. And um, she turns to get your approval from Proxinos. And uh, I have never told anyone this, not even your father. And I want you to know something, Proxenos. Pentos is your father. I was with child, with you. Things were well, and I was happy. Medios, you were but two years old at the time, and even then I could tell you were happy you were going to be Happy to have a new brother. How much older is Pentho? Is <laughs> Midios than you? Um, I'm um Midios is younger. Younger. Oh, I'm sorry. I am crazy. Yeah. I don't know why I thought yes. But but so he, he would acts not be like the older brother. He acts like the older brother. I see it's yeah. been so long. I'm, I'm messing up my own your own backstory. <laughs> so yes. Yeah, so she's this is before there was Medios. Yeah. Um, she was with child, and she continues on explaining how happy she was um, because strangely it had taken them a, a long time to have you Pentos was so proud to be having his first son and within two to three months of my of, of into my terms I I begin to feel like something was wrong. Um, the handmaids constantly said everything checked out, said you were fine, but you're lit, you, you started to move a lot. And I started to have these fits, these bouts of slumber. I was always tired. I was, I was sleeping longer and longer with each passing day. By the time I got to sixth, seventh month, I was, I could not understand I always felt like something was wrong. And then close to the ninth month, when we were preparing for our joy to be, I just chalked this all up to just being a, a hard labor. Um, uh, uh, and I, I, I had given all of my hopes to, to Heliot and to, to Iroas to give me victory in this birth. My first child didn't not even knowing whether you were going to be male or female. And one morning, my horror, my shock, and I saw blood. And you were no longer, you didn't move. I could not bring myself to tell your father. I had to hand me to clean everything. And I immediately went to see my oracle. She delivered devastating news 
that I had lost you, and that you were still born in my belly. How could I go back and tell great Penthos that his son or his child, our child, was no more? I was upset with the gods, and I prayed to Heliot. I prayed to Iroas. I prayed to Perforos. I, I prayed to Karametra. I asked all of the gods. Of course, the only one I never thought of thinking of was him. I went through an entire day not saying a word to anyone other than my oracle. And that night, I had a dream, a very strange dream. And in that dream, um, a figure came to me, a handsome man, but not in the way that strange, not in the Akroin way. He was a bit slender thin and frame, no beard, and his eyes are just a bit sunken in, but still beautiful in his own way. And in this dream, he told me that my child, he told me you were a son, you were a boy. He didn't say his name, but he said he had answered my call where others would not. Because of my strength and my beauty. But I now know he also did it because of the reverence that I had at that time given to Heliot. And in the dream, which I thought only a dream. He asked to lay in my bed, that he would make my child whole. I don't feel good for it, but I was desperate and it did feel so surreal. I woke up, I literally woke up in a sweat from that dream in labor. And you were born that day. So I guess, to, what? It, Medios kind of steps forward. So in truth, you are both son of Pintos and Erebos. You are both champion of Akros and Dreamwalker. And I would do it again to make sure you draw breath, drew breath. I hope you do not hate me for this. Roxanos looks at his hands. He looks back up to his mother. I do not, I couldn't. You are my mother and you have given me life and he stands up But 
this means that my journey is not yet over. But we can rebuild the house. We can... I feel like you're, you have a place here in the state of Akros. Let him go, mother. Let him... Let him find himself with his father of darkness. He could never be the man that Penthos was. And you can tell, I mean, he, he says that in a way, he says, um, speaking almost in a way you could tell he's speaking against Erebos. He was like that. He could never be the father that Penthos was. Proxenus walks over to, to Midios. Puts a hand on his shoulder. Gives him a light smile. And he says, make me proud. And actually, I'm just thinking, the spear is actually broken, right? I have the other half. You have the other half. You just make sure. He kind of tears well up a bit. When you're done, <laughs> you just make sure you bring the other half of my spear back so that I can make it whole. With a with a shit hand on your shoulder, you can kind of he's kind of halfway being complete asshole, but all halfway trying to be somewhat loving brother in the best way that he can possibly be. It's a promise. Yeah. For a second, the spear glows not, almost so fast that maybe only not even you or him catch it. Uh, it would have to be whoever outsider would be seeing this. And um, do you leave the room or do you exit here? Do you what hap What do you think happens next? Or what does Proxenos do next? It's nothing dramatic. He doesn't yeah. leave. He just. I, I think that he just takes in that moment as yeah. It's just them there, so we kind of pull out and uh, close that scene, fade to black, as them all looking at each other. The first, the first time in a long time, seeing seeing each other for who each other really is in this family. Um, and maybe somewhere in the ether or in the Nyx, hopefully Penthos is looking on proud uh, as we pan up towards the sky and through the sky as we see the stars that are the Nyx in the end that scene. Um, good stuff. Now, what I would say, um, instead of role playing any further, this is a chance to share any ideas on where, on the political movement that you this may go. Because I think that shortly after there, instead of kind of role playing it, they're kind of things that your mother would share with you that I, I think between you all, your mother does agree with Medios to some degree that the house uh, owns the most of the treasure. She believes that your party should be handsomely paid. They should be rewarded with uh, a place within the halls of the House of Christos, rewarded with stature. Um, the house is always open to them. I imagine that in the moments after this scene, they do learn that from Taroxes and Tomu constantly talking about how quickly they need to get back to the mountain to start working on this, this temple as a home base. Um, the mother offers to fully fund this um, and make sure that to get the teleportation sigils activated so that you can use them at your leisure. But you can tell that there's some members, Fitz, and who kind of are like, this sounds good, but it sounds like you're trying to pay us off. This is ours. How, who are you to kind of bargain with? And maybe no one's actually said that yet. 
but in these preliminary, maybe you're thinking it, you know, there's going to be some friction once this is kind of rolled out uh, to the party. So what say you, where are you at? Where's Proxenos in this? I think Prox, uh, Proxenos would take a, um, he like, when he's not sleeping, he is very much a sees into can see into those kinds of things. Maybe it's because of his constant travels that he has wisened up that it's not as simple as it as it seems. When it's like we we defeat the dragon, we this is ours now. Mm -hmm. I think he would talk about how this we did earn ourselves a reward do not think that we are not getting one but i wish to help out acros in the best way possible and giving back to the people of acros not just one house not just the other houses but those who have been lives have been destroyed those who have been forgotten back to them as true champions as true heroes would do and even your mother takes that to heart she realizes that the house of Christos does not own this either she realizes that the house would take their portion she believes that a portion should be offered up to Tyrannica who is the um, the, the daughter of uh, the ruling, the ruler who's gone missing. And also by bringing a strong offering to Tyrannica, she believes that um, the House of Christos can be reinstated with a, a, a positive going forward instead of this smear that has been on it by what everyone witnessed. Um, a campaign can go forth where it can be proclaimed that not only are the rightful heirs, the house here, that that Pinthos was the dragon, um, and that all can be cleared that this party is the one who went into the depths and brought this back. She is willing to kind of put herself out there as a representative to make this statement for the House of Christos. That is where Proxima stands. Well, let's um, let us go forth and and hopefully convince your friends um it is good that we stand together um and with that uh you know a side scene of you all kind of meeting together and, and talking it out as we you know end that and fade to black and i honestly think that's all that needs to be role play tonight <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man that was good <laughs> Yeah, that was better than I thought. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't know. It's, it's always good. You were just, it was all just just great role play. So um, yeah, that's um, yeah. So what do you think? Like he. Yeah, so I, I know Jason's been like your mom's. On. <laughs> yeah, was, I'm, like, it's like, I'm like it's not completely like you know traditionally what what he thinks. And I I mm -hmm. do think I want to create the separation that this god didn't come to her like. Uh, like Zeus did as this physical form or trick her and come as her husband. It was in a dream and it was a fair offering. She knew it was, she didn't necessarily know who the God was at the time, but she knew it was an entity kind of disguised as a man. It was and, a desperate cry for help to Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And so I don't know if that makes in, I think even for her, I, I think there's probably a part deep down that probably makes Erebos despicable to her for that. And then same right, in a weird way, she probably feels owes oh, some form of gratitude. She just never thought it would ever come out. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that that is that is that is that. And that also kind of plays to the opposite side of how, uh, you know, your brother, her second child kind of grew up in mostly Heliod's light. And I think maybe Erebos knew that Heliod was, uh, maybe he could see into the future or maybe, maybe he has his own ways of knowing, but he knew Heliod had had his mark on the house. And I think at some time the mother probably, you know, prayed to Heliod a lot. So, um, and I mean, sense, Erebos yeah. is petty enough to do it. So, <laughs> uh. um, the other, the other thing too, that, um, that, 
Proxenos has thought about, I think I even discussed with you is the, um, the biggest reason why he came back was because his dreams showed his brother dying from mm. 